Subnautica is a world of beauty and fear. Cute, cuddly creatures and terrifying monsters. And as you get to the center and the meet, the mid game of Subnautica, that is when the magic happens. And most, many players end up falling in love with this game. Eventually, you're going to need to strike out further. And in this section, we're gonna take a look at three wrecks as you venture further out into the map that you're gonna to wanna to look at. So from zero point, we're gonna pull up our PDA and we're gonna go into our beacon manager in the third tab. We'll come down to life pod 12 and highlight it to a color that's gonna stand out for you. I like orange, so I'm gonna leave it as orange. We're gonna be going towards this. We, if you make it to life pod 12, you've gone too far. We'll be getting just to the edge of the bulb zone here. And we will be going through the Northeast Mushroom Forest. And if you remember, there are two Reapers at either end, the left and the right. We'll be going through right through the middle. And if you run into a Reaper while following this guide, you didn't go through the middle. As we go along, if you do not have Life Pod 12 Beacon, you're going to go northeast east about two clicks to the right of northeast as you see here as we come into the mushroom forest we're just going to go straight through it to the other side if we shift over like this to this side you can actually see it opens splits right between the two it's almost like a road just kind of follow this along. Keeping your compass between northeast and east. And this kind of ensures that we stay in the middle. Like this. And now we're back to two clicks northeast. You'll start to see the blue bulbs. And this arch. This is a good indication that you're at the right location. Once you find this arch and you're on the edge of the bulb zone, you're going to make a left and go due north and follow it along the ridge. A ship will be sitting right on the edge of this ridge, right on the beginning of the bulb zone. You will find bone sharks and ampules here, so be careful. And the bone sharks hit pretty hard. If you'd like, you can hide your sea moth. Up in here, there is a data box in here that you're going to want to look at. And these bone sharks do a lot of damage to your sea moth. You will need a laser, laser cutter here. And we're going to go inside and I'll show you where to go. Now, once you open this door, here is the door right here that you need to cut. We want to cut this open. On the other side of this will be the data box for the Cyclops sonar upgrade. This is a crucial upgrade for your Cyclops. And if you plan on finishing the game, there are many areas in the Lost River and in the Lava Zone that are very dark, just about too dark to see anything. Down here is the box, Cyclops sonar upgrade. The next wreck we're gonna take a look at is in the Grand Reef. So from here at zero point, we're going to turn south-southwest, about in the middle. And honestly, if you popped out, you'd be going to the edge. We get out. And you see that the mist there is the southern island. We'll be going about right towards this location. As you can see this area is pretty important as well and the reason is because not only does it have the data box for the cyclops shield generator but prawn suit drill arms grappling arms and all kinds of other things have a chance to spawn here as well it's a pretty good wreck 
And the only enemy we're really going to run into with this one is a warper. They're more of a pain than anything teleporting you around, but just be careful. Bone sharks are a bit of a nuisance until we get down towards the wreck. Once we get closer to the wreck, it's just really the warper. From here, everything starts to drop and you see the blue balls and you are in the Grand Reef. You'll start to see boxes and wreckage. And right here, that's the data box for the shield generator. Take your time here as well, because up in this area, you can find gel sacks as well as ruby, which you'll need for advanced material crafting. The last location we really want to look at is the last Degassi base. Now, this one is really important because it's the only known location for the orange tablet. We're going to be going south-southwest, about two clicks to the left of southwest. But for this, we're pretty much heading just a little bit left of the center of the southern island. Once again, we'll be going back to the Grand Reef, and we'll be going a little bit further this time and going into the deep Grand Reef. You will need a Mark II depth module for this, at least. A rebreather is advisable, and we will be dealing with warpers and crab squids. Crab squids are a bit of a pain, and they emit an, a pulse that will knock all the electricity out in your ship, just for a few seconds, but it's it's kind of a pain in the butt and honestly their appearance gives them a spider-like appearance and for me it's probably the worst enemy that I I just absolutely do not like just because of their appearance once everything drops off like this we're just gonna go straight down and you're gonna see this tip of this I guess mountain or whatever it is just want to go over it it's like this just following along the ridge and then it'll drop. And that's where we start to fall down. Right here. We're looking for a hole in the floor. As we go down. Into the Grand Reef. Once again. This is a great location for rubies. And you can find gel sacks here as well. fall along this ridge just like we're doing here the hole is re literally right here so we're going to go right through this hole once we get down in here we're going to turn our compass to the north turn your light off here gel sacks you do not want to attract the attention of the crab squids I like to park my Seamoth underneath this, just to kind of keep them safe. You can see the crab squids right there. Ooh, they give me the willies and a warper. From here, you have the alien containment. There is a data box right there. But down here in the back in this hole is where we want to go, down inside. And in here will be an orange tablet. Now, I've already got my orange tablet, so it is in here for me. But you will find the orange tablet here on this table. Preparing for the Lost River is a massive chore to do and a huge part of mid-game. Things like ghost leviathans, warpers, and even sea dragons stand in your way of finishing the game. And one thing they do not tell you is once you get all the way there, if you didn't prepare properly, you'll have to go all the way back up to the surface to go all the way back down again. So this next section is all about hatching enzymes. And this is more of a quality of life section. So if you don't want this or you don't want the spoilers, just skip this section. If you're still here, 
Let's go inside the base and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. Coming into our fabricator in the advanced materials section, you won't have this until you've unlocked it towards the end of the game. You have hatching enzymes. What they don't tell you is in order to make the hatching enzymes so that you can get the cure for the Kara disease, you have to have a sample of each one of these. 16, 1700 meters below the surface of the planet is kind of a pain in the butt to get yourself all the way back up to the surface. What they don't tell you is most of these can be found before you even go into the Lost River. First of all, ghost weed, which we can see down here in the bottom left. Don't even worry about collecting this one. Once you hit the Lost River or the entrance to the Lost River, this is going to be all over the place. Just make sure you keep an eye on it, and when you see it, get at least one sample. Bulb bush, which you can find in the bulb zone. All you have to do is find a nice blue bulb, hit it with your knife, and get yourself a sample. Fungal samples are easy. Go to one of the mushroom forests and just sample with your knife. Eye stock, honestly, near life pod 19. When you go for, in my guide for Ruby, down at the bottom of that, right next to life pod 19, is a whole bunch of eye stock. Make sure you get some when you go there. And then the last one, Sea Crown, you won't be able to get this until you get all the way to the end. So if you set up your Cyclops right and you have all these items, By the time you get there, all you have to do is just double back to your, to your Cyclops, craft the hatching enzymes, and finish the game. This is going to make your life so much easier and could cut at least an hour of grind time off the end of the game. In this section, we're going to talk about advanced materials. These are pretty important, especially if you're going to want to craft upgrades for your Cyclops, your prawn suit. Or anything else. So the first thing we're going to talk about is deep shrooms and blood oil. You can find this in the blood kelp zone. Now deep shrooms you're going to find on the floor and the vines that grow up, the white vines with the deep red blood drops at the base, you're going to find there. I'd advise picking a few of these mushrooms and a at least one of the oil and growing it back at your base, just like you see here. This is going to make crafting a lot easier. Go ahead and plant it in the ground. And for things like deep shrooms, and just strike it. This will give you four seeds for each one, and then you can plant those seeds, and that's how you're going to be able to get a lot more. As you can see, I now have four in there. With the blood oil, you have to plant this. So just plant the one blood oil. It'll start to grow. Once it grows tall, you'll have at least three blood oil, three to four blood oil on this, and then you can pick those and plant those. Grow as many as you want. Once you find gel sacs, you can do the same thing. You can pull a knife. I can hit it repeatedly to get seeds. And then I can just switch it to the container like this to grow more. In the resources tab in the section in the middle is advanced materials. Hydrochloric acid, which is important, will need three deep shrooms. So once again, make sure you grow them or you're going to have to go to the blood kelp zone every time you need some. This is kind of a pain, especially with crab squids. Benzene, which you'll need for many things, needs three blood oil. So as you saw out in my grow bed, I was growing an entire outdoor grow bed of just blood oil and one of all deep shrooms and one of all gel sacs. You should know where gel sacs and ruby are by now, but if you do not know where ruby is or you're having a hard time finding it, I will link my ruby guide down in the description below. Synthetic fibers will need benzene. So this is a multi-tier crafting system here. You will have to craft the benzene in order to craft the synthetic fibers, aerogel, gel sacs and ruby, polyaniline, which will need hydrochloric acid, which needs deep shrooms, as you're getting the point. These materials are going to be used for many different end game things, including modules for the Cyclops. So first, let's go ahead and take a look at the Cyclops upgrade fabricator, which we can find in the engine room of your Cyclops. 
once we come in here, the Cyclops shield generator needs polyaniline. This fire suppression unit needs two aerogel. Your decoy tube upgrade needs aerogel. And your thermal reactor module, which if you haven't used this ever before, is a godsend to recharge your batteries and your Cyclops needs two polyaniline. The prawn suits, thermal reactor, grapple arm, and torpedo arm all need advanced materials to craft. So remember, as you come across these materials in the game, make sure you grab some and plant them in your grow beds outside. As you get closer to exploring the Lost River, you're going to need to set up your Cyclops as a mobile base. This is my recommendation and how I set mine up. You can set yours up any way you want, but this is how I set mine up and it should serve as at least an outline for how you're gonna wanna do it. So down here, you get some small lockers. There's really not very much room, so I went ahead and made more lockers here in between. And as you can see, I can access them this here, I can access this here, and I can also access the one in the middle. This gets me a lot of storage area. I wanted to set up my modification station here, but honestly, you may want to set it up all the way down here next to this. And there's a specific reason for this. As I have Cyclops Death Module 2, you won't. The highest mod depth module for the Cyclops that you'll have is the MK2, and that's because it needs three nickel ore. Now you can do this with a 900 depth module upgrade on your Seamoth, and you can just kind of strike out and scout the Lost River a little bit ahead of time, which I do advise that you do. It's easy to grab the nickel. It's fairly early into the Lost River, and once you have it, you can craft your depth module two for the Cyclops. The depth module three, you won't be able to craft until you have kyanite, which is all the way down in the lava zone. So from here at the bridge, we come into here. I have some trees for food, and for some reason, I just like the lantern fruit, but they're not very efficient as far as H2O goes, because you can see they only give you three water. Something like a bulba tree would be better. I also put an in interior grow bed here with a whole bunch of marble melons, which highlight over these are really good for food and water. These are outstanding. I put a number of lockers in here, including one here that I put before I left, equipment for a pop-up base, which we'll cover in the next section. All needed materials, extra things, and a whole locker of bleach, which we know if we take bleach and come into this, into the water section, we can get two water from one bottle of bleach. This just helped with my hydration a lot more and I was over prepared and I honestly would rather you guys be over prepared than under prepared. There is one more thing you may want to consider before you go to the Lost River. Now hear me out before you click away. This is a pop-up base. Now I know the whole goal is to set your Cyclops up as a mobile base, but until you get the kyanite that you need for the thermal upgrades, you may want to consider something like a pop-up base because you may want to explore the Lost River. I know you don't have to go extravagant here and as you're collecting everything, set this up somewhere away from your base or just off to the side of your base. Something like one multi-purpose room. Now we can do a thermal plant outside because honestly there's going to be vents and enough heat to generate that. You may want to consider something inside like a nuclear reactor or bioreactor, which you can just take the plants from the Cyclops and throw them in here like marble melons, all the tree pieces and all that good stuff. So from here, there's only a couple more things you're gonna to wanna to consider doing. And that is what is needed is a power cell charger. This is gonna allow you to charge the dead cells or almost dead cells from your Cyclops here in the space. You can just set them up. You can set a couple of these up, honestly. I would set like two of them up and just let them charge here. Now, once you have it set the way you want it, and like I said, don't go extravagant. Just, just very simple, basic, just a simple function, 
just in case. You may not even need this, but it's better to be overprepared than underprepared. Set a special locker aside, a full size locker. We pull this up, something like this, right? Set that up in our Cyclops. Once you have it done, break everything down into the pieces that they are and then store it inside your Cyclops.